One of the things that I often see is the complaint that good astro imaging cameras are expensive and not easily in the reach of newcomers. And I was pondering this when something new dropped on my desk for testing from ZWO recently. Now, there is a good range of low-end cameras available from ZWO, and many of these are really quite good for deep sky imaging, and somewhat cheaper than the high-end cameras. The trade-offs are generally in terms of sensor size, with the smaller sensor cameras having much lower price tags. But don't let that put you off. For some applications, like planetary imaging, this is actually beneficial. But usually for deep sky imaging, large sensor chips are beneficial. But you can still get some great results, even with smaller chips like those found on the 533 and the little 585 series of cameras. So all isn't lost for a beginner. The 533 Pro series though are still not cheap cameras, although uncooled versions are available. Having a cooled camera does come with some benefits, even when doing things like electronically assisted astronomy, where short exposures are the order of the day. I've been using an uncooled 585 camera for a while for testing. It's a great little sensor and reasonably low noise even when uncooled. It's pretty decent on longer exposures as well, but the noise does start to build up eventually when stacking. It's been great for quick runs though, and uh, does free up the bigger cameras for other telescopes. So what about a cheap cooled camera that is great for beginners and won't break the bank? Well, the 585 Pro uncooled version is a great performer, and uh, the ZWO team have given it a new lease of life and added a cooler. Isn't that great? And here we are. Let's take a look at the 585 Pro. It's a budget priced entry level uh, cooled camera coming to the ZWO range very soon that offers beginners a great little cooled camera at a, an affordable price and yet yeah, still delivers some amazing results. As always, let's dig into it. Hey everybody, welcome to AstroWorks, your friendly guide to the world of astronomy, full of hints and tips of how to get the best out of this amazing hobby. Now, if you're a newcomer to astrophotography, then welcome. And if you're a new viewer, then I thank you for your support. It's very much appreciated. Welcome aboard. The little 585 camera is a sadly overlooked camera in the ZWO range, and that's a shame. It's a great little camera that does well for both planetary and deep sky imaging, and is a bargain for newcomers to get their hands on. It's based on a Sony Starvis 2 sensor, and those are excellent sensors for astro imaging. The 585 sensor on this little camera here is a recent addition and features a low noise, a high efficiency sensor that doesn't suffer from amp glow. Now, if you're a newcomer, we'll talk about amp glow in a moment, but it's worth mentioning the Sony Starvis 2 sensors are incredibly good in low light, and you'll find them in all sorts of other applications, like security cameras, for example. Now the little ASI 585 MC Pro takes that fabulous little sensor and matches it with the standard cooler found in other ZWO cameras. So what are the benefits of using a cooled camera and why do astro images prefer them? Well it's all about noise, or rather a desire for the least amount of it. Sadly a noise free camera isn't really possible even with modern technology. All electronics create noise and for some astro images that noise appears in our images as pixels that don't reflect the subject that we're capturing. They might appear as pixels with no values or ones that are fully turned on. We know these as hot and cold pixels, and you'll find them in all seamless cameras regardless of price or manufacturer. Pixels may also show as receiving a signal but didn't capture any photons. We can see these if we cover the camera and take a calibration frame called a dark you'll not see a completely blank image, but one with a variety of pixels showing. You might also see some patterns within the pixels due to the way that sensors read out the data and the noise created from the process of converting photons of light to a digital signal. It all adds noise. The downside to noise is that hot electronics create more noise than cold ones. So this is why astro images crave cooled cameras. We can also see this in the graphs that ZWO offer on their cooled cameras. If we look at this ASI 294 MC Pro graph, for example, you can see that the temperature of the sensor is reduced, so does the noise created in the image. 
So that's a big benefit of cooling, lower noise in our images. The other plus side of cool cameras is that you can create a library of calibration frames and reuse these and not have to do them every time you image. On uncooled cameras, you need to do a calibration frame set every time you image to match the exact temperature you captured your data at to ensure they calibrate well. With a cool camera, you can set the temperature one you can reach regularly and then do a set of calibration frames and reuse them, knowing that your camera can easily reach the same temperature when you operate due to the cooling. So cool cameras do have some significant benefits, but they come at a cost. The cooler, the fans and the thermal management electronics adds additional complexity and cost to the unit price, and so they're generally more expensive than their uncooled versions. But the 585 Pro comes with a very attractive price. So before we discuss price, let's first have a look at what you get for your money. The 585 Pro comes in the same body style as the standard 4 3rd and 1 inch format cameras, measuring 78mm in diameter. The rear panel is the typical ZWO layout of a USB 3 port and a 2 port USB 2 hub along with a cooling fan outlet and a 12 volt inlet. Now, that's actually a good point to raise. There's a downside to the cooled camera in that you need 12 volts connected at all times for the cameras to operate, even if not cooling, and you'll need to consider the power requirements of the cooler into your power budget if operating from batteries. Now the ASI Air DC outlet ports are good enough to power all ZWO cameras and the DC extension leads needed are included in the ASI Air box too. The camera interface on the 585MC Pro is the standard 42mm size and you can connect to your telescopes using the included adapters in the box. ZWO include adapters to manage 48mm threads and the typical 55mm back focus found on most reducers or flatteners. Although, do check your optics though, as not all are based on 55mm. The 585MC Pro is based on one of Sony's latest sensors, the IMX585. This is another weirdly designated sensor. It actually measures 11.2 by 6.3 millimeters with a resolution of 3849 by 2160. This is an eight megapixel one shot color chip and has a pixel size of 2.9 microns. As I said, the Starvis 2 sensors are very sensitive and the 585 MC Pro has a quantum efficiency of 91%. Now, for beginners, quantum efficiency, or QE for short, is the value in percentage that shows how good the sensor is at converting photons of light into data. 91% means that for every 100 photons that hit the sensor, 91 of them will be converted into data. And in the current market, 91% is a pretty good performance. The IMX585 chip also has a low read noise too, at 0.8E. That means the sensor has a good low noise design. Actually, you know what? The more I look at these data sets, the more I think I need to do a video on what they mean to a beginner. I'll see to that soon, so stay tuned. Another confusing term for a beginner is well depth. The IMX585 has a decent well depth of 40K. Now, an analogy of this would be a bucket capturing raindrops. Uh, short depth of bucket would capture less water than a bucket of the same diameter with a much deeper depth before it overflowed. In short, the bigger the well depth, the more light it can capture before those photons are ignored as the bucket overflows. So, deeper well depths can capture more light from brighter objects than a camera with the lower well depth for the same length of exposure. That's good for really bright objects like Orion, where you're trying to avoid blowing out the core of the nebula, let still also pick up all that dusty surroundings. The IMX585 sensor is a 12-bit sensor. That's the number of bits assigned to each pixel, meaning that the brightness and color level from image objects will have a good range of contrast across them. While this isn't the same realm as a 14 or 16-bit APS-C or full-frame sensor camera, for a small sensor, this is still a pretty good performance. The smaller sensor has a big advantage over the larger APS-C and full frame cameras though, and that is the frame rate they can hit at full resolution. The 585 MC Pro can turn in a decent 47 frames per second at full resolution. So this won't be too bad a performance for solar or lunar imaging as well. And the camera does have a 256 meg DDR3 cache memory as part of the sensor architecture, and that'll help maintain readout speeds and reduce amp glow. Oh, I nearly forgot, amp glow. 
Now, one of the benefits of these modern sensors is the lack of amp glow. This is the bright star-shaped effect you see in the corner of some older sensors. This effect is caused by the sensor circuitry creating an infrared signal that the sensor picks up. These modern sensors combine with fast readout negates this effect. The byproduct of that is the Astro Images find data much cleaner and easier to process. Now that's not to say you should be shy of a sensor that has amp glow. It's easily manageable with the correct post processing, but for a beginner it's just one easier step if the data is already clean. I did cover this off in a topic in a video on processing the ASI294. I'll include a link to that video in the description too. To test this camera, I installed the ASI 585MC Pro on my TS Optics 80mm APO refractor with the matching reducer. The included adapters made mounting it a breeze, and I also installed my 42mm filter drawer so I could pop in a UVIR filter and also test with the Optolong L Extreme dual band filter. No problem connecting the camera with the supplied adapters, and I was up and running pretty quickly. I used the ASI Air Plus and the AM5 along with a mini guide scope and one of my trusty ASI220 mini guide cams makes for a really neat and compact wide field imaging rig. After a quick pole alignment we're off and running and I started with a quick live stack of M42 as it's really high in the summer sky here. Now we have a real challenge in New Zealand in summer and that the evenings are light until late and it's getting light early too. So imaging windows are pretty small at this time of the year. Using the UVIR filter I ran some 60 second subs and was really pleased to see some fabulous data coming down in a single frame. Images are very clean, low noise with the camera cooled to minus 10. I can't cool down here too low in the summer, it's just too warm outside at night. Not that it matters too much, once you get down to zero degrees, there is not a huge difference in the noise, which is great when it's that warm outside. I went on and ran for a couple of hours on M42s, and you can see here, the results are pretty impressive for such a small sensor. This really is a great little camera for beginners, or an imager wanting a low-cost second cooled rig. Following on from the initial success on broadband, I installed the L-Extreme dual band filter. Most of IM imaging is narrowband anyway. Uh, we have a lot of great emission targets here in the south, so that's where I tend to focus. Using the dual band filter, I ran some subs on the Carina Nebula. For narrowband work, I tend to up my exposure times too, so I did some test images at 5 and at 10 minutes long. The little 585 MC Pro was perfect at both and created some really nice data using some very simple gear. So overall I was really impressed with the little 585 Pro and I really wasn't surprised at that. I know from my experience with its uncooled version, it's quite a fun and capable little camera. And as I said earlier, don't let the small sensor put you off. If you're on a budget or looking for a cheap camera for another rig, then the 585 MC Pro might well be what you're looking for. The smaller sensor will have a reduced field of view, but it's still well sampled in my setup. The 585 produces nicely sampled images on my 80mm with the reducer at just under 1.6 arc seconds per pixel, which is actually an improvement on the 2600's IMX571 cameras, which are sampling at around 2 arc seconds per pixel. Now, I wouldn't read too much into that unless you live in a place where sub-arc second seeing is a regular occurrence. Here in New Zealand, that's definitely not the case, so I don't get too bent out of shape around sampling rates. So overall, the little ASI 585 is a capable little performer, and while it's a smaller sensor, it does match smaller and somewhat cheaper telescopes quite nicely. So, how much of a bargain is the 585 MC Pro? Well, I think you'll be surprised as this camera is going on sale in early February at a very attractive $599 US dollars, which is squarely aimed at beginners and those looking for a cheap second rig. And I don't think the little 585 will disappoint you. So for those looking to get into a cooled camera, this may be your entry point if you're on a budget. And I think you're going to start to see lots of cool images from this camera very soon. If you can excuse the pun. We've got lots more new content coming and I do hope today's video was useful and that you'll continue to join us on your astrophotography journey. Please give that like button a thump if you enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe so you can get in on early on all our new material. Again, thanks for your support. We look forward to reading your comments on today's video. Until next time, I'm Simon, you've been watching AstroWorks and we wish you clear skies from New Zealand.